Hi everyone, Joe Wardia here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming to you from RE Plus, the International Solar Conference here in Las Vegas. And this morning I'm joined by Chris Thompson, Vice President of Product here at Solar Edge, and today we're going to be looking at the brand new Solar Edge bi-directional EV chargers. So Chris, good morning, great to see you again. Thanks good for morning. joining us. Thanks to see you again, Joe. Appreciate the time to spend with you today. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Chris, I gotta say, this, this is probably one of the products and one of the categories that we're getting the most excitement on right now, this yeah. idea of bi-directional EV charging. Like if I have an electric vehicle, not only can I drive that vehicle, but I can potentially use that vehicle as a backup generator or a backup power source for my home. So tell us, how does the Solar Edge bi-directional EV charger work and what makes it different than some sure, of the others sure. that are, that are yeah. being developed right now? Well, I appreciate the chance to tell you a little bit about it. So we, we are very excited about this product and it is uh, very unique in the industry. So this is the first DC coupled EV charger. And so as, as a company, you may be here, let's talk about DC coupling and, and the benefits of DC coupling because it's just more efficient. You get more power and more energy from doing that. So what this does is this is part of our DC ecosystem. And this will take PV power directly from the sun and put it into an electric vehicle. So it completely bypasses all of the conversions that may happen with an inverter or with an EV charger. So we basically go from PV, it's about 98% efficient going directly from the sun to your vehicle. So it's very unique uh, in that it's able to do that. Um, if you have a large sized solar array, you can, uh, and you may get clipping, like if you have an AC coupled system, you tend to have clipping, they'll take that clipped energy and it'll put it either into a battery or put it into your vehicle. Um, the other thing that's very helpful about this is it helps avoid main panel upgrades. So one thing that we see, you know, you know, we've seen it in solar for a while. If a customer has to do a main panel upgrade, there's a large cost with that, and they may not get solar at all. It's actually the same with an EV charger. So if you need to install an EV charger and it doesn't fit in your load center in the home, you're going to do an expensive main panel upgrade. And we've seen someone, you know, they want to put in a charger that's several hundred dollars it ends up being several thousand dollars by the time they put in the main panel upgrade. So this sits, because it sits on the DC side, it doesn't take up any space in the load center of the home. And so you put it on the DC side, you get the benefits of the efficiency, you avoid the main panel upgrade, and so there's a lot of value in the homeowner, and I think a lot of value in the installer. Just a quick word from our sponsor, Savant Power, and the Savant Energy Management System. If you're considering an investment in a solar plus storage system, then you're going to want to have maximum visibility and control of how much energy you're harvesting, how much energy you're storing, and how that energy is being distributed within the home. The new Savant power system allows you to dynamically control which circuits are on and which circuits are off depending on battery state of charge, allowing you to extend your battery running time during a blackout. The system also includes an integrated electric vehicle charger, allowing you to charge directly from solar or from the grid or a combination of both. So if you'd like to learn more information, you can visit the Savant Power website or click the link in the description below so that you can get in touch with an installer right away. Now, what's coming that's a little bit further down the line is this concept of vehicle to home and or vehicle to grid as, as a backup. So some cars are coming out now. And, and I think we're a little bit at the early stages of that, where they will allow now it to go bi-directional. Instead of just charging the car, you can discharge the vehicle. Um, and there's kind of two ways that this could potentially be done. You could discharge it into the home to back up the home in case of an emergency. Or if you are part of the grid and you want to participate in a virtual power plant program, then you could participate in that program and, and maybe generate revenue from doing that. So, so this is fully bi-directional and it works in conjunction with our inverters. Uh, and then would allow someone to, to discharge the vehicle uh, and use it for those types of applications. Uh, so it, it's, uh, yeah, new product will be coming out next year. Uh, one thing that it does is our communications for our accessories, I talked about this in, uh, maybe when we spoke in the past, we use home network. So you won't see communications wires even on our battery, on our accessories. So it's using a Google, Google Open Thread based protocol. Um, we call it home network. And so now when someone installs this, they just connect the power lines, no old fashioned communication cables, high speed communications, very secure. And, um, and it really integrates with the home very nicely. That's great, Chris. All right, a couple things that you mentioned that I have to ask you about. Sure. I'm, I'm really yeah. curious how this, how this works. So, so the first thing is you said, 
there's a DC connection with the bi-directional EV charger to the rest of the home system. Yeah. So does that mean that if you already have a circuit, I know like typically if we're doing a home, whole home inverter, we've got maybe a 40, 50, or 60 amp circuit AC that connects the inverter to the home's electrical system. So is that the only AC connection that's needed and then it's just DC direct between yeah, the yeah. inverter and the, and the EV? Yeah, so you know, increasingly what we're seeing is homes are becoming electrified and it's getting harder and harder to fit everything into the home, into the load center of the home. And so this is one of the benefits. We're, we're just seeing more and more adoption of DC coupled systems. This isn't just in North America. We're kind of seeing this globally where DC coupling is becoming more of the standard. And one of the reasons is now, you know, we put the inverter and it takes a spot in your load center. The DC battery, right, it doesn't take a spot in your load center like an AC coupled battery. It sits on the DC bus. This sits on the DC bus. So all of it is sitting on one breaker in the home. So it's the maximum ability to not have a main panel upgrade, but you can still get EV charging, you can still get battery backup, you can still get vehicle to grid, you can still get a large PV array, you can capture all of your clipping, and, and all of those things happen on the DC bus. In fact, our, our inverter actually has an extra AC terminal on it, so you could have a level two and a level three charger. And you could do all of that on that same inverter with one single breaker. So it's an incredibly powerful, an incredibly powerful way to electrify a home and not have that main panel upgrade. That's very interesting, very interesting. Because you know, we see this issue a lot in California where the, the electrical panels, many of the homes have smaller electrical panels or there's just not enough space to make all those different AC connections. Um, but the other thing you mentioned is interesting too, which is helping to fight clipping. So let, let's say that we're in full solar, full sun, the inverter's already hit its AC output limit of yeah. what, it, what it's able to send into the house or send to the grid. You're saying, hey, you can dump some of that extra solar into the vehicle battery or into the home battery or somewhere else on the DC side so you're not wasting it. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. so in, in, um, this was really driven a lot by California. As you know, NEM3 really impacted the industry last year. And the interesting thing with NEM3 is it really got us to up our game in terms of the algorithms behind how these systems are used. And so now what we are doing is, is we are actually predicting the generation that's gonna happen from the sun, and we're predicting the load that's gonna be used in the home, and we will use that to optimally charge and discharge the battery. So it could be, it could be a stationary battery or it could actually be a vehicle battery. It could be either of those cases. And so that allows us to really think of the entirety of energy usage. And we generally encourage people to go with a larger DC to AC ratio than most people. It's more economical for them and, 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 and just because we can capture that energy. On, on AC coupled systems, they're really gonna try to not have you do that because it wastes the energy um, and it's not a value to anybody. So this is more efficient, you, you capture more, we see you know up to 10% more energy harvested just by going with DC coupling. Very cool. Well, I know we're going to talk more about the battery in a, in a future video here, but getting back to the EV charger, yeah. being that everything is DC integrated, are there any limitations as far as charge rates, you know, because it's all running on that single breaker? I mean, what, what kind of output can we expect from the bi-directional yeah. EV? Oh, yes, yeah. so I should have mentioned a couple of features on this. So, so right now, this is a 12 kW charger, which, which is, you know, pretty typical for, for a home charger, and this gets paired with an inverter. Um, so, so this is going to be charging at, at 12 kW, uh, and that's the main, main power rating of it. And also, this is a dual voltage charger. So if you look at vehicles, you typically see either a 400 volt or an 800 volt battery system within the vehicle. So what's kind of clever about this is there are two power converters in there. And when you connect the, when you connect the charger with the vehicle, it interfaces and the vehicle basically shares its configuration data. So it tells you the voltage that it's looking for to get charged by. And then this will configure the power conversion elements to give it that voltage. So you could have a high voltage uh, battery vehicle like 800 volt, which means even though it's 800 volt, generally it could be a little bit higher, fully charged, a little bit lower um, when, it's, when it's discharged. And so this can do both voltage classes. And we do see a lot of uh, chargers cannot manage that, that diversity of voltages. So 12 kW in both 400 and 800 volt systems uh, can be charged with this. Great, okay, so 12 kilowatts, 400, 800 volt DC. Now, I know that this question is gonna come up because I, I hear yeah. it a lot when we talk about bi-directional EV charging is, of course, which vehicle manufacturers are gonna support this and which, yeah. which charging standard? Is it CHAdeMO, is it NACS, or is it gonna be some future standard sure. that we can all agree to play by the same set of rules? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so that's a really good question. I'll see if I have a good answer. Um, there's been a lot of change in the industry driven by Tesla only like four or five weeks ago they really push the NACS standard. So, so this, this connector that we have right here is called the CCS1 connector. 
and it does AC and DC uh, on this port. Um, so I would say maybe until like a month ago, that was the emerging standard. Uh, but now, as of the last month, I would say it's going to be NACS. So, so this charger, when it comes out, it will support both. Um, and so luckily it's not a big change, you really just change the cable and the plug. So, so this, this will all stay the same, so everything I talked about so far stays the same. It's just going to be the shape of this connector, the other one has, has a slightly different shape. So when it comes out, it'll support CCS1 and it'll support NECS. Now maybe the, the other topic that's worth discussing is what, where are the charging standards? So right now there is a protocol, ISO 15118-20, so it's, it's kind of a complicated uh, protocol, but that's defining how vehicles discharge. They're very good protocols, obviously, for charging a vehicle. And, and I would say it's not fully standardized yet on, on the ability to discharge a vehicle. So the, the products will be coming out, and I think over time, uh, newer vehicles will adopt the new standard, and then that will allow them to discharge the vehicle. So that, that's kind of where I think it's, it's going in terms of protocols and standards. Great. Well, we're certainly going to be doing our best to keep up with you and what's going on in the space. Again, it's a very, very exciting space. Uh, folks, again, this has been Chris Thompson, Vice President at Solar Edge. Uh, we've been looking at the new Solar Edge bi-directional EV charger. Uh, again, folks, this product is under development, so it's not something that we have available for sale right now. Uh, we do expect some version of this to be available maybe early, early 2024. Yeah, yeah so probably mid-2024. So we'll, we'll continue to be covering this category for you folks. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that we have on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and go ahead and watch some of the other videos on the channel because you know we, we cover solar panels, inverters, load controllers, you know pretty much all the different components that make up a home renewable energy system. Well, Chris, thank you for your time yeah, this morning. Always so. a pleasure. Nice yep. to see you. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the U.S. residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.